nerds on the plot. You ain't welcome here, no. I'm sure it's special pet norm. Man, it's sicker than SARS. So it's your boy Scan Deuce, the Hip Hop Original, and this is season three, episode number eight of the Head to Head interview series. And I'm here with somebody I would consider, you know, like a genius in his craft, a legend in the scene, one of the nicest producers in the UK, and not even just a producer, man, an MC, a singer, just like a musical genius, bro. So, like, obviously, I'd like to welcome the one and only Nutty P, man. How you doing, sir? What's good, fam. What's going on, fam? Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, man. It's Thanks for having me, G. It's definitely a blessing to finally get a chance to, to interview you, bro. Um, and, like, the first question we always kick off with, bro, um, Nutty P, how did you mm. find your way into music, man? Where did it start for you? Um... Wow, we're going back a long time now still. So I guess uh, my first start, was, yeah, it's like we was talking about before we started recording it, Lancaster Youth Centre, man. You know, um, I was, first I was like, initially I was into film and stuff, innit? Like I did media studies and all of that. And then I found this like youth project that they um, was on, oh, what was it called? I can't remember what it was called, but it was by the fire station in Lambert Grove, yeah? And then someone told me about Lancaster and it's like, they do music there. So I was trying to do both at the same time, but then I don't know, the music kind of just like took over, man. So I started using the, yeah, Cubase in there. And then obviously met Shaka and that, and like Suspense and like Incisive and War Smiles and like, you know, Big Rees and all them people there. And like, yeah, just started working, bro. Just like, I guess it's like, since then, mm. then when I was about 15, 16, it hasn't stopped. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Like I've just been working, making tunes. Like that's it. Working with different people, like different people come in and out, go to different places, like building up my experience and skills, mm. you know, trying to develop artists and stuff as well. like trying to like progress the sound as well yeah. like the uk sound not just being like everyone else yeah like yeah just yeah so, that, i guess that was it yeah man the first the first big thing i did mm -hmm. to be real was like um sorry to cut you uh jump off man yeah 2004 you get yeah. me so, so, so before we got to jump off, bro, I mean, was, was like, did you have like a genuine interest in music? Cause you know, you said you was into film. Like, was you, did you like, who were like the early people you listened to and that? Like, who like inspired you? Uh, the earliest stuff, my earliest memories is my nan playing Bob Marley. Rest in peace, my nan. Mm. Bob Marley, that legend album, that, um, that, yeah, that probably sparked the fire for my love for the thing, man. And then like, I used to have these friends, these um, Lebanese brothers called Jad and Kareem, yeah? And they put me onto the rap thing. Like, they showed me about like, Loonies and Tupac and Biggie and like, sort of gangster rap. And then my dad, my dad was a massive influence as well. My dad was a rapper as well. Okay. He was in Dynamic Free, like, my man was rapping with Tim Westwood back in the day. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. There's footage of my dad on TV and that, do you know what I'm saying? So that like, it was kind of like in the DNA, man. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's and sick. then um, yeah, yeah, man. Like I bought um Big Daddy Kane, Long Live the Kane single. I bought that. And then I remember trying to learn the lyrics and that. And then yeah, it just it was just there. Like, you know, obviously I was still doing school and stuff. I was banging out school. Yeah. But um yeah, the music thing was just like, it's just like a non-stop thing, man. It's always there in my life. Like, I remember my neighbours back in the day as well, like they was musicians. I knew they were musicians. Like I just picked up on it, yeah. But I was like 12, innit? Mm. And I was like, I was telling my name, I'm like, to bring me to the studio, man. It's like, you're too young, man. <laughs> you get me? <laughs> yeah. So like, you're too young to be doing all of that. Like, I was like, yeah, all right, fair enough, fair enough, innit? You know? See. So... 
So it was something that came natural, like, you know, like producing, man. Um, um, and was it yeah. like, was it like the beats you was was into like immediately, or did you like the rapping, or what? It was the rapping first, definitely. It was the rapping first, yeah. But true say, you know, back in the day, you couldn't really get instrumentals. You have to buy the vinyl. Hopefully, yeah. they got an instrumental version or a cappella or whatever. That's cool. But I wanted to make my own beats, like, do you know what I'm saying? I want to have my own things to ride. You know, and then um, I think I started on like Music 2000 on the oh. PlayStation. Yeah, I had that. And then I bought like this interface thing to record the PlayStation to the mini disc. Yeah. So I could go to the studio to make like the beats and then we could voice them and that. When I was in like Lyrical Rebels and that, yeah. And then um, then I got an MPC, mm. 2000 XL. I got that, yeah. And I got uh, I got like a Proteus, it's like a, a, a synthesizer thing, all these like six sounds and shit, because that's kind of what everyone was using back in the day. And I was like, yo, let's go, man. And I remember um, there was a charity shop, Red Cross, near where I lived, um, down Shepherd's Bush Road, yeah. And I used to just buy like whatever cheap vinyls I got, I could get, yeah. And I got um, Kate Bush, Withering Heights. Yeah. Yeah. And like the gold on that, fam, that's so much bangers, bro. I just like, like I learned how to make, the, how, learned how to make beats in the MPC with the MPC in like a week, bro. I was smashing it out, bro. Beats, yeah. like these times I was in college and that. Like, so yeah, man. Ah, yeah. oh. sick, sick, bro. Yeah. And what, what, what's the, what's the origin of the name Nutty P, man? Was that the first name you came up with, or no, nah, no, nah, it wasn't the first. The first. First was my initials in it. I kind of like because I was I was into like Eric Sermon in it. Like I was like Keith Murray. I was like these lot use their real names in it. Mm. But you say like I didn't want to just use my real name. You've got to have a street name in it. So I used to go with my init my uh, middle name initials in it. LDF. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's Anton Louis Davis Flanders in it. So I went with LDF in it. So I was that for time. Yeah. And then when I was going Lancaster now, like. I used to, because I picked up Cubase so fast, like I was proficient with that shit, bro. Like I was like, I was banging out like six tunes a day from when I was like 16, 17, bro. I was just in the lab all day. Yeah. And I the, people started calling me the professor, innit? Do you know what I'm saying? So it was just like nutty professor sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, kind of, and it's kind of stuck, like, do you know what I mean? See. Yeah, man. That's it, man. One of them. Wow. So, how, so how did you end up at, um, doing jump off, man? Because that was a that was a big break for you. Jump off. Oh man. Um, I don't know who showed me about it, but so I was in a crew with Suspense. So I'm Suspense is still my dog, isn't it? So we was in a crew, Lyrical Rebels, with another guy called Aggie, and then I don't know. Um, we started messing with this singer called Tasha, yeah. She was incredible, bruv. I think she might have found out about it still. But this is when it was in sound, in Leicester Square. So yeah. we was going there, innit? And that's where I first met Shay. Big up Shay and that. And uh, Fonts and all of them, man, there. Like Feng Shui. And I was like, I can't lie. When I first saw them on stage, I was like, I want to be these men. These men are cool. Like, I was like... Cause we like me and my crew, we was on this like horrorcore, you know, like Cage, you know what I'm saying, like High Mighty, like D12 thing. We was on this like proper like, yeah, you know, it's angsty youths and that, yeah. But these men were cool. I was like, oh, man, these men are kind of cool, like. And then so then yeah, I thought, I don't know. I don't really have the confidence to do it at first. I was making beats, but I couldn't really make beats in front of people, wouldn't it? Like, I was like, shy, man. Mm. Like, I couldn't even make beats in front of them and them. And then when I found out that it was like, you could win a thousand pounds, I was like, what? <laughs> okay, yo, you know what? I'm gonna do it, man. Like, even if I just lose the first one, screw it, I tried, innit, yeah? And then I did the first one, I'll never forget it, yeah? And like, I, the guy was, he was good. I what was his name? His name was, he was like, he had a tune with um, Eric Sermon. Like he just done a tune with Eric Sermon. So it was kind of big, like, yeah. but then um, he, I heard the tune and he rapped with an American accent in it. Yeah. And I was, I slewed him in it. I was like, nah, you can't rap with an American accent, bro. I've like, that, yeah. 
So then, obviously, I've clashed him now in the, the beat battle and it. I've just like, I don't know, just magically just come up with this rhythm. Everyone's gone mad or whatever. And we've gone outside and I've just been like, all right, fam, let's clash over the beat now, fam. Let's clash now, innit? Let's, let's battle, innit? <laughs> oh, bro, I was so like, my ego was insane back in the day, fam. But yeah, so obviously I won the first one and then I won all the consecutive ones and... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, well, man. It just, it just took off, innit? Like yeah. So I've heard you talk about like like a jump off alumni, bro. So you made a, like a lot of connections through jump off. Like yeah. with. I mean I met predominantly I met like Professor Professor Green, Sway, I met via jump off. Um I mean all the don't flop lot. I basically like Err uh, and all of them lot. I met them through the archaic and that. Um, all the dance crews as well. Dancers used to roll down there, like Boy Blue and then my bones. I met him there, you know. Um, oh, who's the guy? Faith SFX. I met him there as well. Like, it's, it was a sick spot, man. Yeah. Like, did, did you go jump off? Yeah, yeah, I was there as well, man. Oh, I, I met you there then, probably. You probably met me there as well, bro. Yeah, I probably met you there as well. <laughs> That's what I was saying, bro. But I mean, in terms of your style, bro, how would you describe your style back then, man? Because I, I, I know you as someone that can jump between different genres of music, man. So, like, how would you describe your style of music back then? Back then, it was straight hip-hop with a little bit of R&B. Like from 2000, well, I'd say I started, like the first proper thing I did was with Big Brothers and that was probably like 2003. So, and that was a hip hop thing. And then I had I actually had another thing with um, Dr. Syntax and like Ed Scrine and Doc Brown. I did that tune as well. That was that same sort of period, like Dill Will era. Like hip hop, like proper hip hop. And my thing was hip hop. Like, I didn't really touch the grime thing at all, like, yeah. until, I'd say, 2008, right. basically. But then in between, I was doing, like, the band thing as well. Yeah. You know? Like, I started messing around with a guitar. Yeah. And, yeah, like... Because you was, like, a full-on, like, kind of like an indie band, right? Or yeah, just... La Rebla fan, man. Yeah we, yeah. yeah, we still are, man. We still are. We're trying to, we're trying to link up again still, but, you know... It's a bit harder for the stars to align these times, isn't it? You get me? But yeah, yeah, we was like proper punk, ska, rock band and that, you know? Sick, man. But it was, yeah, it was a bit much though, because it was like, I was doing that. I was producing. I was doing my own stuff. I was doing dubstep stuff as well. So it was just like, yo, I can't do it all. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, that's mad, bro. And and at, at what what point um, did you kick off like Team Bakery as well, man? You were doing mad oh, things. Team Bakery. So I guess that was like, oh man, what? I suppose that would probably be from like like two thousand nine, yeah, two thousand nine to like twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen. So you know, obviously the first iteration was like you know Paris One, J, Wordplay, Raw Smiles, Cobain. That was like the first iteration. And then we kind of brought it back with like Wordplay when he becomes Superville and then like the dub rats when I was working with them. And then like um who else was there? We had Mimi Storm and then uh who else? Who else? Oh bruv I feel like it was a revolved obviously Delta Delta Clencher um damn who else was Team Bakery man Shay was in there a little bit um oh man it's like a revolving door fam right. <laughs> so yeah so that like was, yeah so- that's crazy, bro. So, like, basically, in the like last twenty years, man, you you've really worked with a lot of people, like in the, in the Tons, scenes, bro. bro. Like loads, bro. Um, I haven't started name dropping yet, but I know, yeah. I know, I know, <laughs> and, and bro. And this is this is the question, like, for you to do that, bro. Who would you say is like the top five artists that you'd say you've worked with, like, over the years? Um, 
obviously like gets gigs wretch 32 i'd say uh who else man done so much with, uh, steph london. loki well, obviously yeah loki. steph london that's like yeah the gets one loki um did you say cakey young's teff uh done a lot of stuff man so how did you manage to get in with a lot of the like the the grime legends yeah, yeah, okay, so the grime thing is probably like the last of the genres to come to my like my repertoire, to be honest with you, because obviously I'm a hip hop man and I I was very I was a purist, didn't it? I was like, no, nah, I'm not really on this grime thing, like whatever. And then when I started hearing some of the dubstep rhythms, I was like, ooh, yo, the, these bass lines, these bass lines, because I was the bass. Like, I always, like, bust the rhymes of DJ Scratch and Knots, them type of beats there, yeah? It's like, yo, the bass lines on these, bro, it was giving me that same feeling. Yeah. And then over time, it's like the production of of grime evolved and the quality increased. I was like, yo, I think I could get down with this grime thing still. Mm. So I started making rhythms at 140, but I wasn't thinking to make grime beats. I was making my thing at 140, innit? Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I like my thing to be quite melodic. I like a little bit of a melody in there, even if it's a bit spaced out, a bit weird, yeah? Yeah. And like with a sick bass line, that's like my thing. So I tried to make that at a 140 and then obviously ended up working with DWE, FTSE, mm. you know? Yeah, man. But, but I mean, the way you make it sound like it just happened, like, did these, did these, these relationships <laughs> take time to build, like? Just... Oh, Cass is dead as well, obviously, Cass big up dead. Cass. Yeah, sick. Um, you know what, it's all the things, all of these things have been kind of organic and lucky, you know? It's like, first of all, you've got to, like, I've been doing the, the beats themselves, like, I've been doing the things, so my name's been about, innit? Mm. And then, where I've worked with so many people, and like so many people have my beats, it's like eventually someone's gonna be in a session and they've got my beats, and then boom, so and so's there as well. They like the rhythm because they hear the quality, they hear the 20 years of experience, and they're like, yo, this is original, and they wanna get involved in it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's, yeah, man. That's sick, man. And I mean, also, you, you, you work with some of the legends, you did the Kingdom EP. Like, yeah know. oh man i know that that so that bruv so that one day yeah man was starstruck because to yeah. have them in my yard bro like there was like some of the reasons why i did my thing with the british accent bruv because at the time back in the day people had american accents but when i was first hearing ty and rodney black twang on the radio like specifically speaking like spitting what they how they talked yeah. When I saw them in interviews, it lined up. I was like, that's how you're supposed to do it, fam. So to have them all come to my yard, bro, and we was like, we smashed through the three barrels, bro, we made the project. Like, bro, it was like, I was like, yo, I can die now, bro. Like, that's it. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I've, I've completed it now. I've completed the game, bro. Yeah. But yeah, that was, and like their chemistry, it was just like, like the respect they had for each other, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, yeah, man. I remember Ty telling me off once, still, because like, I don't know, man. I've like, I can multitask quite, quite well, in it. So yeah. I was recording, and I was like, I think I was playing Sudoku on my phone. Ty was like, "Put your phone down, bro." I was like, "Oh, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough." Still, <laughs> rest in peace, Ty. I can't believe he's gone, bro. Yeah. I still can't believe it, you know. It's, it's, it hurts, fam. Yeah. It hurts, bro. It's a big loss, bro, man. <laughs> loss for the scene, bro. Bro. Yeah. yeah, it's peak, bro. How, Rest in peace, Ty. Yeah. Ty, man. How did the um pandemic affect you, like, as an artist, man? Did you did you slow down or did you, like, did you just bang out the tracks? How did it affect you? Um... I guess it gave me some more time to sort of like reflect and kind of map out what I wanted to do next and like what I wanted to do over the next like five years before I turned 40 or whatever in it. Like, you know, obviously I wrote a film 
and shot that on like a low budget thing. Um, and then I was like, okay, cool. I probably want to do a few more of these as well. And then, yeah, I guess it gave me some time to really like strategize and think and like have a better routine. Cause I used to, my sleeping pattern was fucked before, man. Like I used to go to sleep at like one o'clock, wake up at like, like 10, whatever, I would sleep at five, like different days, like buzzing and all of that. And I was like, okay, this is an opportunity to reset. Mm. So ended up going to sleep earlier, waking up earlier, like doing a bit more exercise, getting a bit more focused and that size. So I, I found it kind of beneficial, bro. I'm not going to lie, bro. I don't know how you found it. Yeah, bro, it's literally the same as you, man. Just locked in, bro, and just took it as a time to slow down and just focus. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you said, bro, we, we got this 40 coming up soon, bro, and we're just trying to, we need to get stuff done. You know what I mean? Like, because at the end of the day, what it comes down to is legacy. You know, what are we, exactly. what are we leaving behind, bro? We're seeing people that are, like, not much older than us, like, dying and stuff, you know? So we got to start. I know. What, what are we leaving behind, bro? You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. And so so that's that comes to my next question, man. Obviously, we've got the we've got the new album coming. Like Yeah, the mixtape boy. Yeah, the mix bro. Tape. Tell us about yeah. this project, bro. Like I'm hearing like bits, I'm hearing singles, it sounding sick. Like what's yeah, the man. name of the project? What's the concept? Right, so uh the, uh, the concept is nerds on a block. Uh, basically, Selena, Mrs. and my manager, she basically come up with the idea. Because I had the tune, it was an old tune with Shay, mm-hmm. Shay Seven from um, Feng Shui, yeah? And I don't know, it's one of those, you know when you make a tune, you, obviously it probably happens to you as well, yeah? A tune comes to you, like a concept, the tune, the melody, it just comes to you like, yeah. like that. But I just had the tune there and I knew I wanted Shay on it. So he come through, we pat- we patterned it, we like he co-produced it with me a little bit and that. And then um, yeah, I just had a bunch a bunch of tunes that sit in there that was like not specifically for anything. And Selena was just like, oh, we should do a nerds on the block mixtape, you know. And I was like, okay. And then from when she said that, I just went off. I just created the whole, I created a law and everything, and like, you know, it's like hosted by a made up character DJ Mike he's from a different planet and that do you know what I'm saying in the future it's like yeah I've, I've probably gone in deep with the references and the artwork and everything and like um, we're basically dropping a video every Monday until like November Sick. so yeah and the actual mixtape is out on August the 5th yeah so yeah and then also there's like a bonus it's like a Cause I play a lot of games in it, like you know what I'm saying. Nerds on the block thing is not a gimmick. I'm actually a nerd in it still, yeah. and like you know, a lot. Some games have got secret endings, and you have to unlock them. And that's what I've done with a the mixtape. There's a secret version of the mixtape that you have to unlock by yeah. deciphering the code that is in. I've left the crumbs in all the videos, so people have to figure it out, man. So yeah, it's a bare Easter eggs, man. That's what I'm exactly like nowadays. That's, yeah, G. That's sick, bro. That's sick, man. But what would you prefer doing, man? Do you prefer like producing for other people, or do you prefer being on your artist thing, man? Like? You know what? If you asked me this question a couple of years ago, yeah, I would have said oh, I love producing for people. But where I'm at right now, I just love producing my own thing and making my own tunes, bro. Like, <laughs> I can't lie. Like I've got to that point where I've made every type of beat I think I could possibly make for people because I know what people want. Like I know what people want, but I make the joy I get for making weird stuff for myself, other people don't really appreciate it. Like I can make some really weird stuff that people don't really understand, yeah? Yeah. And it's like, it's lost on them, but I'll appreciate it. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah I'm just like kind of at that point. Like it's like, I think as, as well, it's like the people I've been working with, I've been working with them for like up to 10 to 15 years, isn't it? So yeah. I know what they're on. Like, I know what they're listening to. I know we're on a journey together, isn't it? Yeah. So I know where we're going next as well. That's but it. There's kind of, it kind of loses a bit of a, 
there's not that much room to experiment there if you already know the path yeah. like sometimes you know what i'm saying like i want to i want to push the boundaries bro you yeah. get me so so in 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 regards to that bro what is like inspiring you to keep pushing boundaries man like because obviously like 20 years bro it's like a lot of producers are just like ah, i'm done with this now like what's keeping you that and getting better oh that's a good question still what is i don't know i just feel like i'm I don't know. I think I, I think it's like, yeah, I've done a lot of good stuff, but I haven't I haven't made thriller. Yeah. You know. You get me? I haven't I haven't worked with Paul McCartney. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I haven't freaking produced for Rod Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Like I've I ain't got plaques yet. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean I've got one plaque for mm. the wretch thing, but that's it. So I think that's kind of, yeah, that's driving me a bit still. It's just like, do you, you know. Do, do you ever feel that um, you don't really get the props you deserve, bro? Like, I mean, considering what you've accomplished, who you've worked with, you know, I mean, it's easy to see some guys just come out of nowhere and get a bit of fame and think to yourself, yeah, but you're not as good as me. Like, is that another thing that drives you? No, not even, you know. I think I get the props I deserve still. I feel like the people that... <clears throat> The people that need to know about me know, to be honest with you. Like, I feel like everyone in the industry knows about me. They know where I've gone. Like, but I feel like I've made some sort of subconscious decision to make, like, a real, like, niche shit. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not for everyone. Like, the reason why them people that you've never heard of, they're busting is because their thing is relevant. They, they've they got the formula down. It's like, I've made a decision to not do that. Do you know what I'm saying? Because... It doesn't really... What excites me is doing stuff that no one's heard. It's like, I had this dream the other day, yeah? I was having this conversation with someone about grinding, no clips tune. Yeah. And I was just thinking, in the dream, I was saying to the brother, like, bro, like, grinding is a type of tune. If it come out today, it would be fresh. If it come out 20 years ago, it'd be fresh. If it come out 40 years in the future, it'd be fresh. And I want to make music like that, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. That's yeah, sick. bro. That's sick, man. So we spoke briefly on it, bro. But are there anyone like any artists out there in the future that you'd want to collab with? Like, who's on your list? Oh, oh, hang on. I, I have got a list. One sec. I have a I have a massive list. I'll read it out to you. <laughs> One sec. Because I can't just remember it. There's too many people. Uh oh. Yeah. Here we go. One sec. Feature. Oops. It's good that you got it written down though, bro. Yeah, because you know I You can start ticking them off. Exactly, exactly. I've ticked off the gigs one, so I'm quite happy about that. Sick. Right, so we got Chester P, New Young Pony Club, uh Gasol Gasol from Steen, Beanie Man, Bean, Katie B, Wayne Wonder, Farmer G. Well that one's happening soon, so I'm yeah. quite happy about that. Uh, Nicky McLean, fucking sick. Mm. Uh, Burner, yeah. Klashnikov, Jenna G, obviously Eminem, mm. Bazaar, Screw mm. Fizzer, Adele, Skepta, Mansour Brown, King Crawl, The Kooks, mm. Pete Doherty, mm. Lily Allen, Shaka Khan, Hudson Mohawk, The Streets, Daps on the Map, Marcos Valle, Manga, and. Yeah, that's basically it for now still. But that's sick. That's sick. Yeah. I'm... So so for those like who be like obviously revisiting this in the future, bro, what would you say like like the way we end these interviews, man? What would you say is the nutty P legacy, bro? What is the nutty P legacy? Ooh. Uh well, God willing, it will be one of like innovation. And, and it sounds cliche in that year, but it's not really another way to say it. It's that rag for riches kind of thing. Mm. You get me, my car? Like, when man started, it was high techs on the feet, bro, you know? Yeah. And like, not having that much support from like anyone in the industry or whatever, like proper, like a, like a punk thing, DIY. Mm. And then actually, 
not only just like making something of yourself, but like sort of surpassing most people's expectations of what you could do from what you had. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, hopefully something like that. Hopefully people will be inspired, man. That's real, bro. That's real, man. Yeah. Right. So how can people hear this new EP, man? What's the how can people reach you, bro? We you wanna check well, out. The well, there's the website, which is the main place, antonflanders.com. You could go there. And then obviously Instagram, my name is Nutty P, Twitter, my name is Nutty P, Facebook. I jumped on TikTok as well. Okay. Even though seldom I'm on there, but you know, you gotta, you gotta move with the times, cuz yeah, I jump on a TikTok, do a little stupid video. You know what pisses me off about TikTok, fam? <laughs> Rubs, I'm trying to promote my rhythms, yeah. So I posted up the video of my own tune. They're like, it's got copyrighted material. I'm like, bro, it's my rhythm. It's, I made this. That's mad. <laughs> like, it's so annoying. It's like, oh, do I need to be verified? But in order to get verified, I have to promote my tunes there so people know about me. It's like, you know, Snakey in its own tail, bro. It's bare frustrating. The mixtape's going to be on all good streaming platforms, you know. Yeah, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. Deezer, LimeWire, whatever. And um, yeah, watch out for the Nerds on the Block merch, which I should be wearing, but I do, it's in the wash, so... And I don't have no new ones, but watch out for the merch. It's looking sicker. Sick. And yeah, man, we're dropping videos every Monday. So watch out for that as well. It's going to be crazy. Mixtapes out August 5th. Nerds yeah. on the Block Volume 1. It's going to be a mad thing, bro. Sick, bro. And I remember you saying you dropped a film, bro. How, how can we see the film? Yeah. The film's on my YouTube channel, which is just Nutty P. You search it. Mm. It's called The Big Smoke. Uh, so yeah, if you've got a spare 45 minutes... Uh, you know, feel free to roll one up and have a little look and gander at the film that me and my team put together on the shoestring budget, you know? Wicked, wicked, bro. That's yeah. incredible, man. Yeah, bro, looking Thanks, forward bro. to, you know what I mean, hearing more goodness, bro. That way you seem to drop, you know, checking out the visuals every Monday and that, bro. Um, yeah, man, I want to officially thank you for taking time to kick it with the connoisseurs of hip-hop, bro. My and, pleasure, bro. Yeah, man. Definitely look forward to connecting with you again, man, in the future, my man. For sure, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Love, bro. Love, bro. bro. Peace. Stay, bro. Wicked. You ain't welcome here, no. I'm sure it's special pet, no. Man, it's sicker than SARS. The hits in the bars. Had the time.